Hi, welcome to the Best Bulls Ranch, and today I'm going to talk about how to tell when a female's in heat. And on top of that, dealing with the progesterone testing, when they're ovulating, when to do the insemination, and all those little details that deal with the in-heat process, the ovulation process, and the insemination process. Hi, my name is Jason Soares, and welcome to the Best Bulls Ranch. So just to restate, when dealing with a female that's in heat or a female that you think is in heat, you're going to see a couple of little details or a, a, a checklist of things. You're going to see, one, sw swollen vagina, okay? Two, you're going to see blood. You're going to see blood on the floor, little droplets of blood on the floor. Um, you're going to see females and male bulldogs or, or other do any dogs trying to hump them, tr being very interested in their rear end. Um, so these are some of the, the, the um, like imminent things that are, are going to happen when a female comes in the heat, whether it's the beginning stages, middle stages, or end stages. So this is, this is Khaleesi. She is actually Mr. President and, um, and, and Kilo's mom. She's amazing. She's real, she is a mini, small, compact, good structure, everything. Now, she's in heat, or at least we think she's in heat. So um, we're going we're gonna to do a couple, there's a couple ways to see if they're in heat. Now, one, you're just going to do the blood test. Now, with the blood test, um, sometimes you'll see the dro drops on the ground. And then sometimes, just to be, just to be sure, you'll take a, um, a napkin and you'll rub it on them to see if, there, if there's blood. Now, in this one right here, you don't, I don't see blood. And the reason being is because she already was dropping blood and she's actually starting now to, to, to not do as much blood, which means she's probably going to start ovulating soon. But you can do the napkin test um, to, to test and see if you, know, you see a little bit of red on here. That's one way. So the, obviously the blood is, is, a, is a big indicator. There's also, you can do a Q-tip. I don't really like this method that much because you just like stick a Q-tip up there, but um, I don't really think it's necessary that much, but you can do a Q-tip and just stick it a little bit up there, like an inch, not far at all. You could hurt the dog. Um, and then you go up there. Now, another big, a huge indicator is the swelling, okay? Now based, she's swollen 100%, and based on the female, some of the females, uh, like you're, you're just looking for irregularity, so she's usually a lot smaller than this. But since she's swollen, I know something's going on, and most likely, statistically speaking, she's starting to ovulate. Especially since I know when she last um, ovulated or last had her, her heat. Um, another uh, way you can tell is by how the females and males, if you have any others, are reacting to her. You can also touch and see, she'll like see how she po pokes up right there. If you touch right there, she pokes up. She's getting closer and closer to that actual ovulation. Something you need to understand, a little disclaimer, is that not every female comes in the heat the same way, and it's not the, the same criteria. And what I mean by that is, sometimes they don't even bleed. And this is, statistically speaking, nine out of 10 times the female bleeds and they run the regular course. But some females are irregular. Sometimes they have what's called a silent heat. There's different reasons why they give a silent heat. It could be stress, could be um, they're not, their body's not developed, it could be all kinds of things. Um, so to tell you there's only one way to, to understand if a female's in the heat is wrong, okay? But statistically speaking, nine times out of 10, you're gonna see swollen, you're gonna see blood droplets um, if you're in the beginning stages, and you're gonna see all kinds of other things. Now, the other big indicator is obviously you see Escobar, and you see how she's reacting. She's actually very, very, like, for, <laughs> she's very like submissive about it and letting him do that. He's obviously extremely interested. She's honestly getting very close to, the, to, to where she's gonna start ovulating, and where if you put semen in there, she'll start to, um, it'll work. And you can, you can see how he is reacting to her, extremely interested, which is a sign, you know, Mother Nature telling us that, okay, now she's, she's definitely in heat, she's getting close to ovulation. The, uh, the females will, all, will actually do this too, and the females will try to hump each other, so that's when we see he's about to try to mount her now. She's actually getting very close to where she, it's time to inseminate, and we're gonna talk about that too. Um, but Escobar's definitely interested, so having a, a stud dog around, or a male, or even females around, and you seeing this kind of reaction will tell you, okay, female's starting to come in heat, or female's in heat, or female's ovulating. It's all relative to the time when a female's in heat, and the reason you're going off when, they're, when you want to know when they're in heat is because that's when it's time to breed. A female comes in the heat every four to eight months in that window. Normally it's six months, every six months, depending on their health and everything. But that being said, when the female does come into heat, now we have to deal with you know, the breeding process. And they're only gonna really ovulate for two to four days on average. 
So they're only going to really have eggs there for a certain amount of time. And now, since you know that, now that's when you need to have you know, fresh semen in there, whether it's going to be through artificial insemination, whether it's going to be through surgical, TCI, natural breeding. Um, there's a bunch of different ways that can be accomplished. So the most important thing is getting, or getting it pinpointed to when the female is actually going to start ovulating. Now, statistically speaking, I know I say that number a lot because they can, it can be early or late, but st statistically speaking, the eggs on a female are normally going to drop between day 10 and 13 of bleeding. So from the signs of first bleeding, you count 10 to 13 days, that's when there's going to be eggs there. This is not always because sometimes they maybe started bleeding four days earlier that you didn't see because it's very small drops. Or maybe they started bleeding late and they were early and it's going to be you know, day 15. So I'm just saying statistically. That's why when you put more factors into play, you become a lot more accurate. Meaning, if you now know that, that she started bleeding and now we're on day eight or day seven, I'm gonna do now what's called a progesterone test. And we can do that through the vet. Um, I have my own progesterone machine because I, you know, I, I wanna know and I wanna have that ability to, to do my own stuff. But um, now you can test. And you're gonna normally test progesterone depending on who you are and how, how cautious you wanna be around day six to eight. So around day six to eight, is when you're going to do your first progesterone test to get a number, get a reading, and then you're going to go from there. Now, a common question people ask me is, what number do I inseminate at? Or what number do I do TCI at? Or what number do I do surgical at? All these things are extremely relative. Um, you're going to do different stuff for, for TCI, different stuff for surgical, different stuff for artificial insemination. But most importantly, you need to understand that there's not a specific number because it depends on what machine and what, what, what scale you're going off of. That's like saying, hey, my girl's at a level 10. Level 10 what? Like, I don't know what, what measuring system we're using. Are we using an IDEX machine? Are we using a mini VDES machine? Are we using a fine care machine? There's six plus machines that you know, are pretty, pretty um, common that people are using. So if you're using a mini VDES, you're probably doing fir first, far, first live artificial insemination around 10 to 14. If you're using... Uh, I'd, um, um, fine care probably start 13 and plus. If you're using IDEX, a little lower. You know, there's all different kinds of machines. So it all depends on what scale you're going off of, and you need to know that. You need to know your machine and know the scale, or know the the vet, and he's going to tell you, oh, we start first live submission at this at this date or this number. Those are super super important details to understand. Now with English bulldogs, I don't recommend live breedings meaning like letting them naturally breed because the male can get overstressed um, and they have a hard time linking up and then it can cause the male to overheat, it can cause him to hurt himself and this is very dangerous and then they won't stop either. They'll keep on going, going, going and they can overheat very easy so I don't, I don't recommend that. Now I do recommend doing AIs, doing TCIs, doing surgicals. My order of, of what I like the best is AI. I like to do AIs the best. Then TCI, less invasive. And lastly, surgical is where they actually make a little incision and they um, take a syringe and put the, uh, the semen right into the uterus. Now, you're only going to do surgical if you're dealing with either shipped semen, frozen semen, chilled semen, or the female is very late, you're late and she's super high levels because that means you only have like a day left of eggs being there and you want to get fresh semen in the uterus immediately. Um, if you have chilled semen, good quality, you can do AI or TCI, both of them are great. TCI is very similar to surgical, but they use a camera and they go in through vaginally so they don't sedate, they don't have cut the female open, and they just um, use a camera and they go up and they drop the, the semen right next to the uterus. And then AI is just um, done with like a tube and syringe and you just put it there and it you know, goes down and it's the closest thing to natural and I, pref I prefer that, less invasive, um, less stressful for the female, and uh, if you're dealing with, with good quality fresh semen or chilled semen, I recommend that and that's worked the best for me, but everyone has, has their, own, their own style and their own opinion. Now, when to do these procedures is gonna be based on your, your female's ovulation. Um, and that's gonna be based on the progesterone test and numbers and the graph you're going off of. I know I'm talking fast and it's a lot of information and I, can, I can't just say, inseminate here, do this, do this, and that's what's gonna happen every time because there, there's a lot of irregularities in this. But statistically speaking, if I had to give one thing of advice would be inseminate between day 13, day 10 and day 15. And you would do the insemination at day 11, day 13, and day 15. Three inseminations, um, AI. And if you had to do a surgical, you'd probably do one day 14. And this is just me like just throwing out the stuff out there. Because that statistically is going to be the best results. Because we know statistically speaking from date of first blood, 
they're going to start, they're, they're, they're dropping their eggs around day 10 to 13, 14. And that's when we need fr fresh semen there. But there's all kinds of uh, all kinds of little logistical things, that errors and stuff that happen there. Maybe you're a couple days late on noticing the blood. Maybe the female's irregular. All these things happen. So the best thing you can do is try to check all the criteria and, and, and pinpoint this and be as accurate as possible. And that's what we do. We make sure we're looking at you know, how the males and females are reacting, them, how swollen they are, when the blood was, the progesterone tests. Um, the more progesterone tests, the better, because you're going to be a little more accurate. Because, for example, you could progest your female and she could be at a, a, a 10 on a fine care and you're like, okay, now we're going to seminate tomorrow next day because she's probably going to go up. But that doesn't mean she's, she could freeze and stay 10 for three days and then the eggs aren't there. And then she could, you know, spike, her levels could spike. Now the eggs drop and there. So the more accurate, the more tests that you can be, the more tests that you, that you can take, the more accurate you're going to be and the more success you're going you're gonna to have. And this is why breeding is hard. You know, there's so many logistical things and errors and relativities that happen that it makes it very hard to pinpoint. And uh, that's why it, it takes, you know, doing the proper steps and tr trying to be as accurate as possible. So as far as the, the Best Bulls Ranch build out, it's been a little bit slower of a week. We still got a lot done. Doesn't look like we got a lot done. Um, we started doing the cedar walls, um, painting the walls black, doing the cedar walls. So it's actually going to match the doors, match the dividers. Um, I was working on the cabinet even more. Um, the, the, the shelving unit, have to seal it, have to finish it with clear coat. It's an it's a extremely long process, but the whole, the whole facility inside is going to be made out of a, a combination of cedar, uh, epoxy, um, um, marble, and aluminum. So we, we have all that, um, but we have some big things coming. We're doing, we're doing hurricane shutters in a certain place. I can't really, can't really divulge that information right now. Not because I'm trying to be, keep it secret, but I just want to show it, and then I'll, you know, I'll give all the, out all the information. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions at all on how to tell the females in heat, the progesterone testing, make sure you comment below. You can, you can write me directly on email, thebestbulls at gmail.com. You can find me on TikTok. You can find me on Instagram, and you can write me on any of these platforms. If you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer. And I, I just love the questions because one, it, you know, it makes it so now I, I learn how to to explain better, and then two, maybe it's things I didn't think about. So I appreciate them, thank you so much, and definitely stay tuned for the rest of our how-tos and our episodes.